All right, so next thing is a, your tripod. And a good tripod is, um, is very, very vital. I do categorize this as a need, depending on uh, what you're gonna be doing and how you're gonna be doing it. Uh, this model right here, this is a Impact VT2500. I got this off of B&H Photo. I really, it's a great, great website. B&H is really great. Uh, you can find a lot of stuff on there that you really can't find anywhere else to purchase and they, they're a really great supplier, great shipping, great prices, uh, I do recommend them. And this this model actually has a good fluid head uh, that really does rival some of the thousand dollar models out there. I mean you do get better quality when you spend more money but the fluid head on this is very smooth, you can get very high quality pans and tilts. Uh, another thing about this tripod is it supports the weight of my rig very very well. I'm very happy with it. I had a regular consumer camera or tripod before that had one of those little uh, uh, quick release attachments and the camera was wobbling all the time as it was on it was completely useless to me. Um, but as you can see here even when I shake it the camera stays nice and firm because it has a very wide mounting plate. Um, so a good tripod I would categorize as an absolute need. Even if you have a run and gun setup like this if you want to put your camera and just have it steady, the the other one that I had, the consumer one that wobbled a lot, if I didn't touch it, it stayed still, but as soon as I would adjust the focus, it would wobble everywhere, it would look very unprofessional. And another quick thing that I wouldn't categorize as a need, but this is a dolly system here. This folds out and allows you to attach your tripod rig um, onto here and, and move it around. This isn't necessarily a need, uh, but you can, it allows you to move the tripod easily when everything's set up. And obviously a system like this is quite heavy, so it allows you to move it a lot easier. Uh, now they do make dolly systems that are designed with a track, and those are really good for when you're um, doing movement in a scene, or if you're, if you're recording and you want to do some physical movement, uh, that gives you a much smoother um, uh, dollying system than this would because it, it would bump on the carpeting or if you're on it can make sound if it's on concrete or something like that so this one's basically for moving in between shots um, but that that's a Davison Sanford W3 and I got that on B&H also not very expensive it's a great thing just to have it attached to your rig and, and easily to move around so there's that and uh, so we'll move on now to the microphone now the microphone is um, there's lots of different ones to choose from and sometimes it can be confusing because basically when you're looking at a microphone uh, sound is what it is the core of it and you may not know what it sounds like until I actually use it. Uh, the microphone that I used to have before this is the video mic the Rode video mic and I talked about that in, uh, one, in episode 2 of Next Wave TV and that's a good good quality unit it's a very basic microphone um, for the quality and the sound that you get from it uh, you really can't beat the price it's honestly really really good but uh, as you spend more money, you do, do get better quality. This is an Asden SGM1X microphone, and it doesn't have the high and low ranges that most Rode mics do, but it has a great mid-range, very clear, and uh, for, for dialogue, it's a really great microphone. And uh, I do recommend it. Um, it's not very expensive, uh, considering the quality that you get from it. And uh, if you're using a camera like the uh, Canon HV30, uh, you may want to get uh, well, if you want to get an XLR microphone, you would have to get a unit like this uh, BeachTech DXA4 adapter. This allows you to attach um, multiple, up to two XLR microphones at the same time. You have full control over the levels, and uh, it's just a really great quality unit. And this allows you to have basically a professional setup for your microphone like you would have with most professional grade cameras. Now, there are different, there are other microphones out there too. Uh, the Rode makes the NTG series, which does have a much wider range, um, and it's they, they are better quality, they are more expensive though, so as you spend more money, you get better quality. Um, there's audio technical microphones, there's lots of other, even more expensive microphones out there. Um, so do, you know, do some tests, do some research, find out what's going to work best for you, but um, I do like the Asden, and I, I do recommend it, and I would categorize a microphone as an absolute need, because, unless you're going to be doing no sound in any of your video recording. Um, if you're just going to do like audio overdubbing or something like that, but I do recommend a good microphone because uh, that is really going to add to the professionalism of your entire rig. So that would put it as a need. All right, next thing we're going to move over to is the monitor, and this external monitor right here. This is a Lilliput. 
Uh, it's a 7-inch widescreen VGA monitor, and these are actually commonly used in in-car setups for people that want to have either a PC in their car or a, um, a DVD portable DVD player or something like that in their car, and this would just attach to the dashboard. A lot of us uh, video people like to use them as external monitors because they have the VGA input, and uh, they can use component input from your camera, uh, high-definition camera. And what I have here is a Mayflash v, or component to VGA adapter and allows me to convert the signal over to the Lilliput and I can get 480i resolution in this, which is much better than the standard yellow plug that you would get for composite video. Um, and the important reason for 480i is when you're doing manual focusing for your depth of field adapter or even regular manual focusing on a regular pro professional grade camera, you want to have as high resolution as you can so you can get the detail focus on there and so you don't get um, it where you're out of focus. Um, and they do make high definition monitors, but um, they're much more expensive. So decide how much you're willing to spend on your rig. The little put is a great compromise because it's good quality, but it's also inexpensive. Um, another important reason to have a monitor is when you have a depth of field adapter like this one, they do make models that uh, will automatically flip. The lettuce will actually flip inside the unit, um, but the 35 millimeter lens uh, flips an image upside down similar to the way your eyes do, and that's how the image is recorded on your camera unless you have a flip module. And what happens then is you're basically going to be looking at upside down in your view screen. So if you don't have a flip module, the, a great use is to get an external monitor like this and simply flip it upside down, is how, and that's how I have it configured here. And that allows you to basically um, not have to worry about looking at the image right side up, into, and then when you get into post, like into Premiere, you can just flip the image right back side up. Uh, so a monitor is not necessarily a need, but if you don't have a flip module and you're using a depth of field adapter, it can be a need because you have to look at that image right side up somehow. So uh, that, that can go either way, that one. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is the map box.